Can you guys try saying something? Hello, it is Dan. This is Ricardo, and this is how I sound. Hey, you're listening to Ricardo and the Gooch. <laughs> Dan the Gooch. Ooh-ah. Ooh-ah. Uh, very good. Deanna Troy had a big ass. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, From certain the- angles, she kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> That's in the intro now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Very good. Very good. Uh, Why do we even bother waiting for the music? We already started. Yeah. The recorder started off. (laughs) Yeah. Gina is a captain. Yeah. We need Ah. to cut off. We need to cut off the music before it picks up in energy and tries to outdo us. Damn you son of a bitch. <laughs> like now, now, fade it out now. Ah. Hey everybody. Welcome uh, back to Newbie Star Trek. Or if you've if you've never listened to Newbie Star Trek and for some reason the first episode of Newbie Star Trek you're listening to is episode five of season two, then welcome. Yeah. Isn't this episode Trek. six? Oh sorry, six? Oh my god. Yeah. We've already lost in space. Oh my god. Man. I've I'm 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 already fucked up. There's too many episodes already. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, you know what? If I, it might be that there are a lot of first-time listeners here because you know new people keep filing in by that's them. true. Channel, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah, like, "Ooh, that yeah. episode! I want to hear about what what they said because yeah. of this clip." <laughs> because clip. And then uh, they find out that it's it's um. Wait a minute. It's clickbait. <laughs> so they, are the clips you're releasing on TikTok relevant to the episode that is newest? Um, I have a queue, so just behind the scenes a little bit. I'm a little behind because of oh, life. Okay. Oh so, my god, dude! Uh, How dare you live your fucking life, dude? <laughs> so fucking sick of life, man. Yeah. Uh, so sick of life, dude. Specifically, oh, boy. yeah. <laughs> You're always g- coming Get in, in here line. talking about your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, this is Marvin's life. I'm Marvin, and uh, Marvin's life is joined by Dan's life and Ricardo's life. Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm Dan's life. Hey, I am Ricardo. And I also like to party. <laughs> That's that will Ricardo's life. Yeah, the life, life of, of Ricardo. Ricardo. Well, yeah. I've, this, this. <laughs> <laughs> instead of instead of it's like Life of Brian, except instead of like scenes, mm-hmm. it's just one long take of a party. Yeah, yeah. Or is it several scenes that are all separate parties? Oh. <laughs> You know, get some variety. In it's there. like Rashomon, but from different point of view perspectives. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone's having an equally good time, though. There's no difference between the perspectives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are we talking about? All right, the Schizoid Man. That's what we watch. That's what we watch this week. Yeah. Uh, what a course. what a misnamed episode. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that title right. Well, I think it's because, like, uh, okay, for for a long time, and even now. Um, there is a misconception about what schizophrenia is. That's or what true. it means. Yeah, especially mm. in like, the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like schizo, you know, that two syllable slang term um, became like a, a way to refer to people who like act as though they uh, have two different personalities, you know, that sort of thing when they're two faced and they call them schizo, et cetera, et cetera. But I schizo guess. was never about multiple personalities. Schizophrenia yeah, is never yeah. about per- multiple personalities. That's that's dissociative identity disorder. That's a very yes. different type of thing. Yeah, and that, even that, then, like it's only when they 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 only emerge in certain scenarios. It's not like oh, I could switch to a different personality. Like like unless you're a, a Dateline special, yeah. <laughs> then you have like thirty of them in you. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Sarah actually follow started following a TikTok where it's someone who has DID. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just explain. They're just like, you know, some of my personalities are really mundane. Like this one is just for driving. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, this, this like because the rest don't want to drive. I, I, I don't mind driving. So I'm man. The it must be like playing yeah. a video game where it's like <laughs> I'm putting on my I'm putting on my like my high jump shoes. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah I should it's... develop DID. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> No. Not today, Dan. Not today, dude. Okay, maybe not today. <laughs> maybe oh, I did uh, yesterday, and I don't remember because uh, well, it was someone else. I guess we should mention that all DID arises from trauma. Um, yeah, it's kind of impossible to have DID without severe trauma, so you don't want it. <laughs> I yeah, got a lot you, of drama you really in my don't. life, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a, a, dic- oh. a dictionary definition of schizoid, just so that you know. 
it said it's denoting or having a personality type characterized by emotional aloofness and solitary habits. It's about being antisocial, not about anything that happened in this episode. Yeah, ah. it's it's a, it's, a, it's a definite misnomer today. <laughs> yeah, so put that to rest. Although it's it's so it, it rolls off the tongue a little better than DID man. Yeah, dissociative or dissociative identity disorder is always hard to say. Yeah, I failed yeah. just now trying. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, it is. It is difficult. But know, anyway, it's, it's been right. a while since I've pitched uh, um, a new captain, and I think oh, it's, it's true. Oh, it's you're true. gonna do it now? Okay. Yeah. Who is yeah. your Who is your capitan? I I just, I've been watching a lot of Stallone, so I think imagine Stallone as a captain. Mm. Captain Lucard, yo way, yo way. <laughs> Wait, are we sure this hasn't yet been suggested? I don't know. Has it? I mean, he he did show up in Guardians too, right? Yeah, as like like Yondu's like I don't know what the mentor? position is. Friend? Mentor, like commandant, like yeah. the, his leader, yeah. right? Yeah, like and I forget former his... commanding officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. though they're pirates. Yeah. <laughs> I could see it, dude. Imagine them like imagine like like a Stallone now, where he's kind of like he's an older dude, and he's just kind of like, lumpy from all the yeah. growth hormone. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the interesting part is, I feel like as the older Stallone has gotten, like the more like like he feels more like believable as an actor. I'm not sure why. Like, uh, hmm. like the 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 world weariness of age brings a lot. Yeah, I I think maybe yeah, like because. Because even though the original, like, for example, like the original Rocky is ar- obviously a better movie than Rocky Balboa. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for some reason, I believe Stallone's performance in Rocky Balboa a little more than in Rocky. It's because mm. he's had decades and decades to convince himself he is Rocky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like he, Rocky when, he, Balboa's- when he poses, when fans top, stop him and ask him for a picture, he, he always just, does the fist yeah, thing. He doesn't yeah. just go, hey, I'm going to do like I'm stabbing you with a knife like Rambo. No, he, he's like, he's like, <laughs> he does a fist, dude. He, do, he does a fist. The classic he has a, fist. He has a switchblade just yeah. for this. Like, like, like. Yeah. <laughs> well, hold on, let me put my hair, yeah. my, hold my, on. Let me put on my, my beret. Yeah, I'm going to do it like I'll Demolition I'll, Man. I'm going to pull on my knife. Bam. Hold on, let me put on my judge helmet. <laughs> well, he never did in that fucking movie. He had oh, off most of the time. <laughs> they they, they peek too much for that face. <laughs> oh my god! The evidence has been falsified. <laughs> <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> uh, oh boy! Hey, uh, Star Trek. Bones was a better dread. <laughs> oh, oh! Like that Back movie, to Star in, Trek, right? That movie in general. I said Bones. Was, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And then going backwards from there, because that's new bones. We're going all the way back to TNG. And this episode of the Schizoid Man first aired January 23rd, ja- January. Uh, January. January. Yeah. I think I saw January. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ja- even when you were I making fun I of me, you said it's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> January 23rd, 1989. Dan, if you could take us around the sun and explain what happened. Zoom. It, uh, well, this was two weeks after the episode prior. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the meantime, on the 13th of January, 1989, uh, this just stood out to me as kind of funny because, like, I never saw this show, but A Bit of Fry and Lori was a sketch comedy show starring Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie that debuted on BBC One. It oh. just was interesting to me that they shared a program together, mm-hmm. and like, which was like ostensibly just straight comedy, you know? Wait, the, wait, the show was just called A Bit of Fry and Lori. Yes, a bit of Fry and Lori, <laughs> <laughs> if you prefer. Are they are they literally just? like just the british terms and they use the british terms like oh here's a fry like french well, what fry is, what is a fry a, well, i know like what a, fry, a chip is but i don't know what a fry a whole is fry is anything that's been fried like like a you can have a fish fry and then like it's just fried fish and then or like like a fry shop is just fried shit and then um Okay, I'm Lori getting hungry Lori. now, dude. <laughs> kind of want some oh, fish go. and chips now. <laughs> yeah, fish and chips is actually pretty great. Not gonna, not gonna lie about that. Also, uh, just because we're on the subject of Britain, for whatever reason, computers across Britain around that time were being hit by something called the Friday the Thirteenth slash Jerusalem virus. Oh, Jerusalem! Uh, I guess it was a it was a big deal for the computers of 1989 at the time. 
it's actually kind of crazy that they had enough interconnected networked computers at the time to distribute a virus. I guess so. Yeah. It's 89 we're talking about. Yeah. Like, like. A- Some, somebody was watching fucking porn. And yeah. <laughs> fucking virus. Was AOL even still a thing? When did AOL come out? 92. Uh, like consumer level, like anyone can get onto the internet AOL was like mid to late 90s. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, AOL apparently started in 1983. Mm, like as a company, but I don't yeah, think yeah. they really like but, branched But AOL out. for Windows didn't start till 1991. Oh shit! So, so that was quite early. So what the fuck were they even using? I still have an AOL account. I don't know for all my spam. Use oh, that. I do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my burner account. Yeah, uh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to insult somebody, if somebody asks you for your email and you want to really insult them, you give them the AOL <laughs> one because it's a real <laughs> fucking slap in the face, dude. Yeah. Or yeah. your Hotmail or Yahoo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hotmail, you- Yahoo. I've, uh, I've, 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 dot com. I've, yeah, <laughs> I've asked someone for their email and they gave me a hotmail and I'm like, never mind, I'm not gonna send it to you. <laughs> and like, but why? I'm like, fuck you, dude. Get out of here, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Dan and I literally used AIM until it died. Like, <laughs> call it AIM like it's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, it we... was AIM, god damn it. <laughs> uh, and we were dude. literally the, like, we had a whole friends list. I, I, at least I did on my end. And then it, like, I think that was it literally the only dwindled. reason. Yeah. And it was the only reason I kept using it until AIM finally died. And we're like, fuck, I guess we'll just use Facebook Messenger or something. Yo, let me <laughs> set this away message. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Dan. Wait, I'm not continue. done going around the sun. I know, I know. Um, on the 16th. <laughs> <laughs> the USSR announced a plan for a two-year manned mission to Mars. Ooh. Oh. Which totally happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thus establishing their dominance over the over America. Yeah. Certainly nothing <laughs> will happen that will prevent the USSR from doing that <laughs> later. Uh, four days <laughs> after that, inauguration day occurred, and George H.W. Bush was sworn as the 41st pres of these United States of America with Dan Quayle as his veep, yeah. who was the 44th veep of America. Yeah. Um, three days after that, on the actual air date, uh, a bit of sad news. Salvador Dali, the Spanish surrealist artist known for painting melting clocks and such, he died mm. of heart failure at 84 years old. Also uh, known for weird uh, movie collabs that would take a lot of time. Uh, uh, yes. He was, he was the original collab guy. <laughs> yeah, He's he kind a- of was. They were like, we want, we want this to have a little Salvador Dali flavor. Can we just yeah. bring him in and have him splash them on? Yeah. yeah, he's like, ha- have him shout us out on his fucking Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, last God. bit I have, just because it it was strangely relevant. Top of the Billboard charts was Phil Collins's Two Hearts, featuring lyrics such as Two Hearts Believing in Just One Mind. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. How about that? Oh, oh. Well, Which brings okay. us to the meat and potatoes of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> potatoes i don't know what that's uh, for. miles o'brien you drunk <laughs> <laughs> who I, said that who said that miles miles are you drinking drinking potatoes oh my god dude <laughs> yeah stop insulting <laughs> miles o'brien then. i mean there there are some alcohols made from potatoes yeah yeah it's, it's, it's true it's true it's like it's a thing you can what drink potatoes if, if you're clever yeah. enough yeah, what is potato potato alcohol you can make vodka out of potatoes i'm that's pretty sure true. You can, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 that's it's just it's just yeah it's just fucking you vodka. can make you can make alcohol out of anything dude yeah also can... have you ever had runny mashed potatoes you can drink that <laughs> no I, I i hate runny mashed potatoes. <laughs> just pour <laughs> pour it down your throat <laughs> Be away. i mean it takes some doing but it's drinkable uh man. live a little guys <laughs> well you know who couldn't live a little denise crosby ricardo oh. could you please tell us what happened in this episode oh, cold blood, dude. Cold blood. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so as cold as your body this is uh, the, <laughs> this is this is the first episode where we have. Is it the first episode where we have a doctor's log? Um, yeah, Beverly never yeah. did one, right? Because she no, was a bitch ass fool. She, she, didn't, she didn't know how to open log, her yeah. doctor's log, so yeah. she never. <laughs> or how to take care of her son. 
that bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's still alive. She <laughs> never yeah, took yeah. care of him. Yeah. Yeah. She um, has to depend on everyone else and the crew to become their surrogate his surrogate father. I know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Riker's got to tuck him in at night every night, all weird and shit. Um no, wait, so it's yeah. Worf who has that duty. Oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's his duty to put him to bed. Yeah. Um, so uh <laughs> the doctor was log- such a babysitter. He was even told to babysit data this episode. Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, uh. Um, so in this episode it starts off, it's a doctor's log, and she's talking about there's this real smart dude. His name is Ira Glass or some shit like that. Yep. <laughs> Ira Glass. <laughs> they have to go. They have to go and save him because, like, his secretary or his valet, whatever you want to call her, <laughs> um, said, "Hey, uh, there's." A, she sent a distress signal. Hey. Yeah. Who is she? Um, what do you mean, it, like the actor? No, but like what. Why is she there? She, they said like uh, wasn't she like, like an Ray. orphan? Yeah, like her parents were like, "Fuck, the, the Palpatine's your grandfather. We're just gonna leave you." Here. <laughs> 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 and they just fucking left her. Uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. Spoilers <laughs> for that last Star Wars movie or whatever. Doesn't Talking matter. Tatooine. <laughs> fuck spoilers, dude. Fuck it. <laughs> and fuck Tatooine. No, I like Tatooine. Uh, <laughs> Tatooine's cool. Yeah. <laughs> So, so this lady the, actually kind of reminds me a little bit of Christian Bell. I guess I guess I could see that. I guess I could a see little that. bit, a little bit. So, so this dude's supposed to be really smart, and they're like, "All right, well, we got to go save this bastard because you know." And the doctor's really like, she's really into it in the beginning. She's like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. Uh, so, so they they get a distress signal, and the doctor's really excited about get there to get there and help him. And he's like really into uh, molecular sci cybernetics. I think it cybernetics is. and Some nonsense. He's, a, he's, a, he's <laughs> like uh, Miles Dyson, you know. He's he's into Terminators and shit. Mm. Uh, and then and then uh, you have uh, Jordy and who Deanna Troy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that save? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're they're walking down the hallway and they're like. I like the banter. I like, I would like to sh- ship these guys, you know, hopefully they hook up. <laughs> if you know what I mean? Uh, well, Cause they're yeah. having, I like, they? I like, I like when they have moments where they, where they are allowed to just have like yeah. interpersonal conversations, just like kind of hanging out shit scenes. Yeah. I like episodes where they're like kind of just hanging out a lot. Yeah. Um, Cause once a plot starts, the pl- a lot of the plots tend to be stupid. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> very stupid. <laughs> See. I do want to point out that as Jordy and uh, Deanna walk down that hallway talking, um, Deanna happens to mention how androids don't have the same feelings as a human, mm-hmm. uh, which sticks out to me because it kind of becomes a bit of a plot hole later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, well, so so she's she's mentioning. Uh, so Jordy's like, "Hey, did did Data tell you anything about what's going on? Why did he call both of us there?" And she's like, "I don't know." And Jordy says mentions that he felt like he f- he heard like insecurity in his voice, you know, mm-hmm, in his mm-hmm. attitude. And Deanna Troy is like, "Well, androids don't feel feelings." Um, <laughs> so she's like, yeah, "You're probably wrong." And um, anyway, they they keep walking down, and they're like, "All right, well, he calls us in for something. I don't know what it is. It's gonna be fun." And they go in, and they're, I don't know why they're so happy. I guess it's just like, hey, we got ten minutes of not to not working. Let's enjoy yeah. this fucking ten minutes. It's 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 been a few hours where the enterprise isn't under mortal danger. Yeah, so yeah. We're, <laughs> there's no viruses it. in this fucking exact <laughs> minute. Um, so so they go to Jordy's quarters, which which Beck is a qu- sorry, yeah, uh, Data's quarters, which which Beck is a question like what. Why does he need quarters? He's a fucking robot. He could like they can give him a small closet and he could just fucking stand there. He doesn't <laughs> well, need to lay down or anything, well, right? He's he's still he's still got desires and wants. Well, and, he's you know. he's just afforded the same amenities as any Starfleet officer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess so. I guess so. Also, if he wants to fuck, he needs like a bed. That's you know. true, but he could do it in a closet. Yeah, like that's but, just the commander's cabin. It could belong <laughs> to any. It could go to anybody. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so they get in there, and, and Jordy's got a beard. I mean, not, Data's got a beard. Sorry, uh, <laughs> that would be cool if Jordy had a beard, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. spoilers! Oh God, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, Data, Data's got a beard, and they really don't go into the details of like how he got the beard. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was actually really curious at first. It's like they're going to explain how he got it on his face, right? What is this? They never. Is worry this replicator about it. hair? Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. 
like the, like did he like to stick he... his face into the replicator and say you know <laughs> beard please engage <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did did he go into the, like the holodeck and request a beard and then he put it on like what i have so many questions about the beard you know I mean? <laughs> he went to a hairstylist and he asked for a certain beard look and then the beard appeared on his face and then he he walked out yeah that's how he got he, the beard he went there and requested a reverse shave <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's just weird. They they don't get into it, and I'm very curious. Uh, anybody, look if you know any any details on this, dude. You email or tweet at us, whatever, <laughs> whatever you do. Direct message. What is that? Is that what you do on Twitter? Um, yeah. Let us know if you have a manual that has like this. You know how they have this <laughs> manual, and it has yeah. like the starship. Like, is there like a parlor where he could have gone to get this beard? <laughs> is there like a laser that makes follicles grow? But then why is Luke Picard bald? It, uh, there's so many things to, <laughs> so many questions. Um, but th- they basically laugh at him, which is kind of sad. Cause yeah. it's like, they always do that with data though. It's like anytime yeah. data does anything remotely like, you know, human, um, human or like any attempt he makes at, at, you know, doing something he's human. Just, he's just trying to fit. <laughs> yeah. They just laugh and go like, Oh, that's stupid idiot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's stupid back at it again. Trying to fit and, in. And, um, you'll and, never be like us. <laughs> and data looks a lot with, the, with his beard. He looks a lot like Al Pacino in Carlito's way. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I just got her prison. Ah. Uh, let's um, tie it all back in tie yeah, it all back yeah. together he does look like El Pacino in, in Carlito's way <laughs> and so they get this other s- distress signal and they can't figure it out well well, finally first of all the assistant the valet or whatever you want to call her she comes on uh, they yeah. hail her and they go hey what's going on and she's like hey this doctor he's sick come, come quickly but she's being very sketchy about it and she's like she looks away and then she cuts the transmission very very sketchy and mm-hmm. I'm thinking, if we're going to go down there, we shoot and then ask questions. Because uh, there's probably some ghouls or fucking some sort of virus out there on the loose. And uh, guess what? There was a ghoul. An old fucking white ghoul, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, he kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so they realize, and then they get another like hailing frequency that uh, needs help. And like, I think their shield broke or some bullshit like that. And they're torn. Like they, they're, they got to go to two different places at the same time. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the doctor is very logical. I dig that about the doctor. Where yes, she's yes. like, hey, even though like I'm super into this fucking hourglass, I really <laughs> want to know. I really want to help the people that are on the ship because they may need our help more, which is. And there's is, also way more of them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, like the, the, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And I mm-hmm. like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. That, that yeah, in this case, uh, this one American life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like they ask one person to wear a fucking, they're like, just wear a mask so we can save one person. They're like, no, fuck that. You're infringing our fucking rights. You go save that. <laughs> like, God damn it, dude. We're all over, the, uh, all over again. Um, but anyway, they're like, the doctor's like, no. Forget, forget the guy. He's one man. We, get, we, we can't risk helping all these people. And so they decide that uh, the doctor is going to go help Ira Glass, and then the rest of the team are going to go and help this ship. Uh, but she's like, no, I, I, the people on the ship need my help. Let's send somebody else to help Ira Glass. Which is very fucking logical, and I dig that a lot about the doctor. I wasn't, and it, and it ended up being like the perfect call. Yeah, because yes. like uh, the way things turned out, it would have been a waste of her efforts to have been there. Yeah, because yeah, yeah that's fact, so he, nice. You didn't, even, that you didn't even really need to send a doctor. You could have just sent someone with the little scanny doohickey. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. Yeah, you really that's true. Need. Yeah, he, they would have been like, "Hey, this guy's got McGregor syndrome. He's gonna die." <laughs> And then Doctor <laughs> Mr. Freeze gives him the little antidote. <laughs> um, a fucking McGregor. Oh my god! Why does that come up so often? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, so they're like, so they're like, all right, we're gonna separate. We're gonna do this crazy move where we and and they they make a big deal out of this thing, and then they don't really don't go into it. They're like, yeah, hey, we're gonna yeah. make a jump during warp speed. We're like, just gonna slow down, and then you tuck and roll, and then we're gonna fucking shoot you out <laughs> into the planet. <laughs> it's like weird. And then they're like, all right. And then so this this doctor that we've never met, she's gonna go. She's gonna be the doctor. So it's Data, Tiana Troy, Worf, and this doctor. Um, mm-hmm. 
and they send him through and then and then she's like hey we're you're gonna be Jordy's like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna beam you out at near warp speed, so you're gonna feel some effects of that. And then Deanna Troy's like, well, what do you well, what do you mean? And then these app <laughs> they don't they refuse yeah, they to even explain it to her. Explain. They're like, Just to- they're like <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> they just- She's like, wait, what? Wait, before you wait, wait, and <laughs> yeah. then they still do it. They it's do a little it. fucked up. But- <laughs> and then they don't really explain it, like. Like when she gets beamed into the planet, she's like, oh, wow. I felt like I was kind of in the wall. And then Worf's like, well, that's because you were in the wall. <laughs> and it's like, I don't. Okay. So they, the I wish they I mean, did. I wish they had a visual. really cool. But yeah, yeah, I wanted a visual of that. I wanted yeah. like, maybe like they come in like with the, 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 the sparklies are like stretched towards the wall or something. Yeah. So they yeah. did more. Or you see that wa- you see it's like like teleporting in sideways or something. Yeah. I don't know. I wanted I wanted the scene in uh, Galaxy Quest when they when oh yeah <laughs> Tony Shalhoub brings in those people and they're inside out those yeah, yeah. Right and you're like oh god yeah I wanted oh, that yeah 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 that yeah that Troy's fucking dead you killed her you fucking piece of shit <laughs> um, and then she's like no I'll just go back to the last save and we'll yeah. get her back. <laughs> So they get in there and they're like, hey, we got to set our, our phasers to stun because we don't know what kind of shit's going on here. And so they're looking for this doctor and then the, her his valet shows up and she's a very young woman. Uh, she's very, very young. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's like, hey, thank God you heard my my fucking calls. And she's like, hey, yeah. So like, you know, I'm I'm Karen or Kareen, <laughs> whatever. I'm going to call her Karen. <laughs> I'm Karen. Uh, she looks like a Karen <laughs> and she's like hey I'm Karen I'm, I'm Dr. Graves assistant and like he's been acting fucking weird I think he's gonna die basically uh, and and everyone's like alright well you know what's wrong with him and then he comes out and boy he is a character <laughs> man this guy is a character Her glass is a fucking asshole <laughs> yes he is yeah, yeah and, yeah, and yeah. at first and at first you're like well is he really sick maybe he's just an old horned up fucking white dude you know <laughs> he's a republican uh and 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 y- you're like well what's wrong with him but then you quickly realize like 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 karen's like hey he's he's kind of like got these crazy mood swings and you know, like he fucking he's always mad and, and he's like fuck karen you don't know what the fuck you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah they like, make like a bit of a joke i was like he's irritable and then he immediately cuts her off I'm like ah, fuck. no i'm not yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> ridiculous and then he immediately starts like looking at all the ladies dude he looks at the doctor he's like hey you're not a bad like specimen for a, for a woman yeah. and he, he goes on this rant about how he hates doctors and he hates people and he likes to be alone and so he's basically been alone with his karen lady for years and clearly there's some feelings there dude you know right you can mm-hmm. tell right away but uh he starts like fucking looking at the doctor he's all he's fucking eyeing her up and down dude and then he goes and does the same thing with uh, Deanna Troy. And then he goes and talks to Data. And Data's like, he basically like breaks everything down. Like, oh, you're this this type of person. You're this. Like, he's really smart. Look, he's really smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, he makes fun of fucking, he makes fun of um, Worf. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Worf, dude. Yeah. At least, at least he's like, ah, yeah, no, he's a Klingon, and like, he's not wrong. The Klingons did used to be basically Romulans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. just prior to that, Karen had inadvertently <laughs> insulted him by asking if he was a Romulan. Right, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, I mean, it's not not that far off, honestly. They're just they're just uh, more outwardly angry than Romulans tend to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like Worf has to jaw both physically and mentally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so he he goes and he walks over to Data and he kind of like looks him up and down. He basically goes, "Oh, you look like like Doctor Song's work." And he's like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, precisely. That's like that's who made me and stuff." And he's like, "Well, you know, I taught him all, everything he knows, so I'm basically your grandfather, you know." And it's mm-hmm. a funny joke. Yeah, I get it. I laughed a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he's kind of fascinated by Data. And then the Doctor uh, <laughs> he turns around. He's like, "What the fuck?" doctor uh, <laughs> and she's like yeah i i tested again i did it twice this guy's got mcgregor syndrome he's gonna fucking die <laughs> and but the thing is like he doesn't look sick like yeah he's mad but like what old man isn't fucking mad dude you know yeah um, he, just, he just looks tired he yeah. just looks like he needs yeah. a nap let him fucking sleep give him yeah. fucking metamucilin and maybe get, him, <laughs> get him high you know the I pain really will go like away. dr solar though i yeah. like her perpetually like bored expression yeah, 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 yeah. She's yeah. she's channeling her her best Spock. 
yes, as, yeah, as hard yeah. as she can because yeah. she is she is uh, clearly a um a Vulcan. Yeah, yeah. That's it's it's noting. it's funny the scene where he uh, she tells him you you have McGregor syndrome, and then he has this like weird smile. Yeah, like and the camera. Like, yeah, yeah, and the camera starts dollying in on him, and he keeps holding this weird smile, and then he does this thing that Daniel Radcliffe does in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, where he's attempting to blink, but only one eye really blinks. So he ends up winking a lot. Well, it's, a- <laughs> it's that he does blink, but one eye is much slower on the on the rebound. Yeah. Well, yeah, one well one doesn't fully close like a ton of the time. So it, well, yeah, he ha- he does have yeah, so like, he has a bit of a lazy the, lid. The actor does have a bit of a lazy eye, so maybe uh, he's just got it. Like he's got real life McGregor syndrome. <laughs> um, I accuse his eye lid of being lazier than his eye. Yeah, 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 and it, it's it's just it just recalled. The wizard people, dear reader, for me, where he's just like he thinks as he winks at the doctor, and and he 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 he, he smiles at at Karen, yeah, uh, like saying like yeah, yeah I'm dying, but he gives her like a weird like kind of a, like a loving look. It's weird. It's a weird fucking look. Yeah, it's a it yeah it's a it's a look that doesn't quite fit. It, again, it feels like they said okay, we're gonna dolly in on you for for yeah. the commercial cut. And he's like, "What what expression should I have?" And they're like, "Just just go with it." <laughs> and he's like, "I guess I should just smile." Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, so the doctor goes into his quarters, and he um he's kind of like like I don't know what the fuck he's doing at this moment. Like he's just kind of like fiddling with shit and stuff. And he's basically he's in his final hours, but it's like he looks fine. Like also like don't they that older dude. Remember he, the guy that took the, the, he eat the beans that made him fucking young. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. The yeah. Beans. The magic beans. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy couldn't get some of those beans and fucking get younger. Like it seems like that other guy, even though his makeup looks a lot older than this dude, that other guy was in a wheelchair and he had like the, the professor Xavier fucking wheelchair. This guy's walking on his own and fucking insulting people. Like <laughs> he looks fucking healthy. And nah, like, you're telling not. me that's the one, the McGregor syndrome is the one thing you can't fucking like cure yeah 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 they 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 do that with the future stuff a lot because they simultaneously say we have fixed all sickness but then go but now there's new super sicknesses that yeah we they'll, they'll contrive a new no, uh, well it's even it isn't even new like she says the name of the disease every, mm-hmm. everyone seems to know what it is yeah i think i think for the future it's normal but for us we never like darn age, it's not a real disease so I, I think it's just more of like in the future this in the future, now, we have super diseases. Yeah, yeah, that are now in, even more incurable. Yes. Yeah, if, <laughs> if that, you if that Doctor Batman disease. hadn't surfaced, then we wouldn't have these super diseases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. So then, he's spending a lot of time with Data, and he 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 uh, he tells uh, Data to call him Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, which is really funny. Yeah, and it's funny hearing uh, Data say Grandpa. Grandpa. So he, yeah. So he basically, <laughs> they're there. He's kind of this old man's kind of like a genius, but he's like he's like also like a poet. He's really uh, a jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. He likes he he's wears a many jackets. Man. Yeah. He jacks it all the all the place. <laughs> um, and so he he basically is talking to to Data, and he's talking about how. Data won't know, like, you know, won't have any feelings like lust or he won't know what desire is and all this bullshit. And Data's like, he's like, you won't know, like, like, basically he he won't experience death, basically, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, no, I can experience death. There's like a button I have that that will like kill me. And I thought I thought he was just going to kill him. But really, he was just <laughs> to put this lightly. He was looking for a port. <laughs> yeah, sort of himself into. <laughs> yeah, that's that's essentially the thing. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Which and, it's just it's just interesting because the, the this is I guess minor spoiler for up ahead like he he transfers himself into the data right off yeah, screen. Yeah. And there should be I, no no spoiler alerts for this these episodes. <laughs> but but it's just like it's just interesting because um like the episode's trying to play it as if like oh we didn't realize it happened but the moment like we cut off screen and data walked up and he said oh he died mm-hmm. like you immediately think oh yeah he put he put his his mind, his mind into his body. Yeah, immediately. Immediately, he was just he, he was just talking about how he knows how to transfer his mind. 
Yeah, I'll be things. honest. I'm not sure that they even intended to have the audience in the dark about it. Mm, maybe, maybe. I mean, it plays just fine if you know. I guess so, but but there's no like sinister element to it or anything. That's mm-hmm. why it, it it comes off kind of innocuous. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it, I guess I guess they weren't super committal either way, so it, yeah. it could probably play either. I mean, it worked fine the other way too. So like, it still fooled the rubes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I guess so. I guess so. And De- Deandre is talking to Karen. Karen's like walking around, and, and basically Deandre is like, "Well, this dude, like, I'm sensing he fucking loves you, dude. I'm sensing he's got a." something for you if you know what i mean <laughs> and she's like, well, what do you mean and she's like well he fucking likes you dude you're a fucking idiot and she's like oh i've always sensed that if i was older maybe we'd hook up but yeah. he's old and you know you know and so uh they're talking and, and he's like oh i never I never knew he felt that way and she's surprised it's like yeah 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 he's a fucking weird dude we're old man <laughs> and so um Eventually, the the old man, uh, Ira Glass, he puts himself into, we don't see it, but he puts himself into data. He puts his consciousness, kind of. Yeah. Um, and um, He's also heard whistling a song from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Yes. This is yeah. another Ooh, random yeah. reference do, to the ba, 20th century. Do, ba, dee, do. That one. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> you got Marvin Good with that one. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's already a short, like stubby man, so him uh, walking around. I mean, honestly, he looks like a gold prospector. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. He, he, does. Needs, a, he needs a golden tooth yeah, and a hat. Yeah. I mean, he's got kind of the gappy teeth already. Yeah, Just yeah, give yeah. him a big floppy hat with a patch on it. Yeah, yeah. He, and he needs a he needs a jig when he goes. Yeah, yeah, Woo, doggy. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so a data comes out of the room, and immediately. <sighs> Look, I've said it once. I'll say it again. Look, I like these episodes. I like doing this podcast. But God damn it. They don't have anybody with fucking logic on that ship. <laughs> Data comes back out and he doesn't sound like Data. Because Data sounds very like, oh, interesting. He still sounds robotic. He doesn't sound yeah, yeah. like, yeah, what's up, my dude? What's going on today? No, he sounds very fucking robotic. So Data comes out and he sounds a little bit kind of like the doctor. I go, nah, fuck that. What do you mean he died? What do you mean the doctor died? In your arms. I call bullshit, dude. You should have yeah. called us, you piece of shit. Second yeah. of all, you don't sound like data. I'm gonna put you in handcuffs till I figure this out. I'm <laughs> I'm I if I'm on that ship, everyone's getting handcuffed. <laughs> or tased. I'll set my taser to fucking to stun and I'll just stun the shit out of everybody dude, until I figure it out. Uh, and so he comes out and he's like, Oh, he's fine. He just died back there. And it's like he sounds like smooth i'm like no yeah. no fuck you dude you're 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 a robot nerd dude um <laughs> and so they they beam everybody back up to the ship and old fucking karen's sad she's like oh this old man um and <laughs> and picard's talking to to data and he he just sounds different like i don't know how he doesn't automatically go you're not fucking regular you're not regular data something yeah. is very his, fucking weird his his body language is also different which is yeah. like a really good uh like performative thing for brent spiner cuz yeah. like you yes. can immediately tell he's embodying a different character which is really cool yeah yeah um, but it should that. be like a really big tell honestly like <laughs> he doesn't even walk like data does like he holds his hands in front of him and like he has he all shrugs. these poses yeah, he has all these like poses and stuff that Data just wouldn't. D- Data is a he just keeps his hands at his side and just talks. Yes, usually. <laughs> but it's just interesting that. Uh... And he's talking to he's talking to Luke Picard, and he he's talking about like he does the thing that humans will do, which is like repeat yourself, like when mm-hmm. you really want something, right? Like, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's because uh, it's the thing. It's a. Uh... It's, it's, a, it's a thing you know and yeah, you yeah. keep repeating it and you find different ways to say it again uh yeah. and he does the same thing with like oh he wanted us to honor him you know stuff so i hope we get a chance to honor him it's like yeah we get it you fucking dick you want to honor him <laughs> chill out dude <laughs> yeah go grow a beard dude uh, <laughs> and um immediately uh, again i would be suspicious about this dude but anyway they let him go and he goes to the to the bar and he so do these people ever pay for drinks I, so, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know how 10 forward works because there are credits um, and part of working a job does give, give you credits, but I don't know if it's like, it's like, I don't know if it's like on like a, 
you know, like when you're in like a Navy ship, you don't pay for food in a Navy ship. You go to the mess hall and they just give you the food. But this is like a bar. Right. right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say. I I imagine that's probably paid, I think, just because guy like people ask Guinan for things. So. You're like, look, if you want a regular martini, it's free. Martinis are free. If you want an apple teeny, that's an extra, that's a 10 credits. <laughs> you want a dirty martini. Yeah, that's, that's 20 credits, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, so he, he, Data goes to, to the bar and is, immediately starts picking up on this on this caring chick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, he and he's like smiling and he's very sketchy. She should have ratted him out immediately. She should have instantly been like, yeah. Like, uh, look, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know this guy. I know he's a robot, but he made a pass at me. And I don't know what the laws are. <laughs> on robots fucking humans but i just wanted people to know he made a pass yeah. at me yeah yeah hmm. we've what already if, done it, that yeah 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 um and then so they go they they have the funeral for old fucking Iron glass and <laughs> they he's in this like weird capsule wearing like this old timey what looks like a looks like crusader he's cosplaying as the knight from indiana jones and the last crusade <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, he chose poorly <laughs> um and and he and then data does a speech like the eulogy and he gives like the craziest eulogy <laughs> Stupid, <laughs> it's those, stupidest speech. those who loved him loved him best but on thursdays <laughs> he was loved the most and it's like it's like, a, it's like a parking sign and a, a drunk street rant for dude. street parking yeah <laughs> like <laughs> yeah on Thursdays, he was loved yeah. from four to eight p.m. Yeah, <laughs> and and immediately, like you see everybody being like suspicious, and that should have been the like that's like this is the third sign already, dude. Like they should be like <laughs> this isn't what da- data is very logical. This doesn't seem logical. Um, let's let's hit him over the hammer and let's hit him over the head with a hammer. We fix him, you know. <laughs> what I love about the scene though is that they are turning a funeral into like this almost comedic scene where everyone's yeah. like what the fuck is he yeah. talking about there's so many reaction shots yeah they keep cutting back and forth back and forth jordy and crosses his arms and picard yeah, just yeah. getting more and more angry yeah and it's great that picard is just like no you're done like <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh and then picard talks to 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 data in his quarters and he's like hey so what's going on, dude? And he's like, yeah, he, 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 you know, grandpa. And he's like, what the fuck is grandpa? He's like, that's what he wanted me to call him because you have any relatives. And it, immediately, I don't know why Picard isn't fucking red flags everywhere, dude. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um. But anyway, he he takes off and and they don't stop him. And they're they're walking. He, then the captain's walking around with them. Um, with um with Deanna Troy and they're talking about they're kind of talking about how like Data's being weird and like he picked up some of his mannerisms some of Graves Ira Glass's Ira Glass Graves uh, <laughs> uh mannerisms. Wait, and- hold on. They they picked him up from a planet called Graves World, right? Right? Yeah. Is that the name of the planet? Yeah. Graves World. World. Graves World. Oh my god! It is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> they just named the planet after him yeah or 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 maybe it went the other way around he discovers like yeah it's graves will no he's a he's a huge dick he would do it oh my god this and it looks like it's basically saturn so he just named saturn after himself he didn't have a yes. choice yeah this motherfucker you know what i missed <laughs> what i missed and i wanted to talk about early but i'm gonna bring it up now is when they're going to do that maneuver where they're just going to like do the tuck and roll or like, we're going to yeah. s- slow yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. We're going to beam you out, tuck and roll and you'll be fine. Um, they ask the piece of shit known as Wesley to do it. And it's like, <laughs> uh, does, has he done this before? Does he know what he's doing? Like, I don't trust him. Like, I don't trust him to fly the ship period. Like I, ah, uh, uh, fuck dude. I hate that he's on the bridge. Yeah, I, like the, the show never gives a good reason for Wesley to be the pilot of the yeah. whole ship. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, sure. like, like it's, he's never been demonstrated to be like an exceptionally good pilot or something. Like there's going to be episodes where they demonstrate that actually Riker is the best pilot on the entire ship, but he's, hmm. he's never driven the ship. Even, even when Picard and Riker were stranded in one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, one, one. Like <laughs> Picard drove the ship back. Yeah. Not he's Riker. Like, oh. He's like, I got this. Dude. Well, Riker at least, uh, manually docked. Yeah. Yeah. He, they, yeah. They, they, they made, he, uh, Picard weirdly made a manually dock just to prove that he's a big dick G about piloting. But then they never really showed up again. Yeah, dude. 
it's never showed his dick again. (laughs) Um, So tell me this isn't true. What I'm about to say. Okay. It's It's not not true. true, God damn it. (laughs) Wesley shows up and then relieves the guy who's there. You think that guy's fucking ego is not in the fucking, like he has no (laughs) self-esteem. This guy, he's like, (laughs) he's like, I literally got replaced by a child who isn't, he's an, it's so insulting. He's an acting ensign and he's fucking gray. Yeah, I mean he, that was Jordy. That was originally Jordy's spot. Yeah, so Jordy must that, feel really shitty. Yeah, <laughs> but when Wesley isn't there, then they get a real officer with everything, and it's like, well, why isn't he always there? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, give it to a guy who deserves it, not this piece of shit. And he's like, this is again, this has always bothered me because he's acting ensign, so he's essentially in a learning position, right? Yeah, like like a learning position shouldn't be driving the ship. A learning position should be like working the science station or like being engineering, working with Jordy, which actually that would make the most sense actually because he's so scientifically minded and he was actually like a genius with warp core technology. He should why be like he, shadowing somebody. Yeah, why isn't he working with Jordy and like, oh, they're working on the warp engine all the or, time or, or like, I don't you know. know Fine. You want him on the bridge? Fine. But have him back there pushing buttons, not in fucking right here in the Yeah, front. yeah, yeah. Like, have him work next to Worf or something to work, yeah. like, the stations and stuff. Well, I don't understand why he's the pilot. No, nah, no, nah, don't do that to Worf. <laughs> you already offered to tuck him in. So, I mean. <laughs> he's got to hang yeah, out with That's the only interaction he needs. <laughs> like, I come at the very end to tuck you in, and that's it. To restrain him, really. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's the fun part. <laughs> I don't. I, I. It still doesn't make a lot of logical sense, other than Gene Roddenberry really likes Wesley. That's really about it. Yep. Well, all of us hate him, so fucking take him back. <laughs> so I don't know if this next scene is planned or not, but like Picard brings on Karen onto the to the, to the bridge, and mm. he's showing her around. And when you say planned, uh, planned by whom? By Picard. Okay. Like oh, like he's testing him. Yeah, yeah, because he's even like not overly, but he's a little like flirty. Like not too much, but in, like he's showing interest. He never shows interest with anybody they they fucking pick up. Ever. That's true. He wants everyone to stay out the fucking bridge, but for yeah. some reason, her yeah, she's what, like yeah, he just she's a young her on. white lady. He's like a whole whole yeah, I'll bring her up to the bridge. <laughs> um, I need a Beverly replacement. Yes. What is he? What is your? What is your Picard sound like? Fucking Mitch McConnell, dude. I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what were you doing just now, Picard? Was that a your I, Picard? I was. I, I was, was sorry. doing. I was doing. Um, I was doing Mitch McConnell as well. <laughs> no, oh, I, I was yeah. trying to do. <laughs> oh yeah, my I was trying to do black. a Sean Connery. <laughs> oh, oh please come on. All this time, I thought you were doing Buffalo Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well close if, if, if you want to do a good Mitch McConnell you do um, that guy that Gary Oldman plays in Hannibal oh. uh, the, the, the fire, the fire uh, and you sound just like a looks just like him too yeah yeah, yeah. my face I'm my turtle face um, <laughs> so the, she, he brings her onto the bridge and Data is a fucking dick dude yeah like he's like yeah you know because because that's all the interest you have in her yeah right uh and he's like and then like everyone's like i eye, eyeing him like this she doesn't asshole. like older men <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well he says that a little bitterly because yeah. you know it, it alluding to his past attempts or yeah yeah scenario. well it seems it seems like he never actually attempted um, i guess that's true i guess that's true yeah yeah he, i mean he, he's a weird character because he seems like he's super skeezy but he seems like he treated her I, I i guess it brings credence to the idea that that the mcgregor syndrome is kind of what turned him to a shitty person because yeah, honestly maybe. how would she have how would she have tolerated him for all these years no, if he true. was that shitty that entire time yeah because if this character <laughs> like, as we see him now was what she was dealing with that whole time i don't believe for a second that he didn't try something yeah some exactly because he's immediately creeping on troy and uh other and dr solar creeping and, and peeping yeah, creeping yeah. and peeping and touching a little bit, which is a little weird. Yeah. So it's just like, uh, yeah. But oh, we forgot right before this, Wesley came onto the bridge with Data, and he was discussing like, "Oh, Data, you gave a great eulogy." Like, oh yeah, it. like people, uh, Wesley, like, you fucking idiot. You think that was a good eulogy? Yeah, to know him is to love him. Is to know him, and I think my favorite part of the episode is uh fucking ira glass just roasting him so i pulled that as a clip because okay (laughs) that was a great speech data 
To know him is to love him is to know him. Verbal composition at its most sophisticated level. Your childlike mind cannot appreciate the time-worn wisdom of my words. <laughs> childlike mind? When you get to be my age, you will understand. Your age? Data, chronologically, you're not much older than I am. Well, you are only as old as you feel. Try to remember that, boy. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's great, because when R- Riker comes up, he doesn't defend him. <laughs> no. Riker just goes, Data, are you okay? <laughs> well, I mean, like, already he's acting so out of character that I think well, like out of character, but it seems like whenever he does that, everyone's just like, ha, ah, Data's on one of his like little things. Yeah, yeah. He probably read a book or something and he really wants to be like that book yeah, he found. Yeah, you read a book of like a comic, uh, like uh, the insult dog book. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what did Data get? What did Data get obsessed with insult? this time? What was that insult dog name again? I forgot his name. Oh, uh, he was in Conan O'Brien a lot. Triumph? Triumph. Yeah, Triumph. Triumph. Why did I say comic? Well, Triumph <laughs> is the insult comic dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's there why. we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Um, so he he really, he's talking back to the captain. And so he's like, hey, I want to see you in my quarters. And basically he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was joking, sorry. <laughs> basically, uh, Tina's like, so do you want to apologize to me or what, dude? <laughs> it's like, for what? No, you're the one acting like a fucking idiot out Immediately, there. Picard yeah, should be yeah. like, to the brig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Get a hammer. <laughs> Picard should just punch him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so th- they're uh, like, <laughs> they're like, we got, we're going to run some tests on you. And uh, then they, uh, they, they scan him. And then uh, Picard's like, before he, they give him the results, they're, he, he's like, oh, hey, why don't you step out for a bit? And he's like, why should I step out? It concerns me. <laughs> and, yeah, that's, those- and that's like, that's really bad. You're you're dis- disobeying the captain. That is yeah. that is a a, a, a brigable offense. Well, to- th- that that's on top of a huge pile of already brigable offenses he already did. Yeah, like, insubordination, yeah, yeah. insubordination since uh, Bri- uh, Karen was on the bridge, basically. Yeah, yeah that's like, uh, like that's from like, there on, it was just like disrespect. After disrespect. It's, it's not arrest. That's at least like room for at least a demotion. Like you call them Picard on the way out. Yeah, yeah. This, this all is weird. sorts of all sorts of bullshit. Mm. Bring them. Yeah. So they they give him they give him like a physical of the is the first test, and then the second test is like they scan his brain. And I love the visual effect that they had on Jordy's scanning device. That yeah, oh, yeah the ring that goes around yeah. him. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And it expands as it goes down his body. It's cool. Mm. I also like the uh, the Clockwork Orange style like. Visual test they give him. <laughs> which, which is just a clip show of old episodes. Yeah, yeah. Where did they get all that footage of previous episodes? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about uh, it. Don't worry about it. It's also, it brings up an interesting idea, though, in terms of like Deanna Troy starts sensing his emotions. Yeah. Which is interesting because that implies that then her psychic abilities aren't like biological. They're like based on like complexity of intelligence or something, hmm. which is really weird. Cause like, cause she can sense his emotions despite him being fully artificial robot. But the weirdest thing to me about that, and this is the plot hole I was mentioning earlier, is that like she e- even like uh, we skipped over earlier, but she even alluded to like, uh, he clearly has very warm feelings for you, Karen. Like she felt what Ira is like. While yeah. on Graves yeah, World, yeah. Yeah. like she got a full impression of what he is and how he feels and what you know his emotions and stuff. And so when Data's around her and acting like full on Ira, like he's not withholding anything, he's just being Ira. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why well, doesn't I, Diana or why doesn't Diana sense this? Well, I think the the one way he's a half beta zoid dude. Come on, yeah, that's but, that's but then the, but then she on, starts dude. to sense it. Why is it gradual? Why does well, she sense anything at all well, as time I, well, goes I, on? Well, I think part of it, again, yeah, Ricardo explains is that uh, she's half beta zoid, so she's not super great at it. That's the, a bullshit explanation. Well, then I think the other is that uh, it can be confusing because it's actually two personalities. So she may be well, like accidentally sense. mixing two different things at the same time. Because why would you, if you're reading someone, why would you assume there's two personalities in there, right? So she may be being like, Data is acting funny, still data ish, but blah blah blah, and she doesn't know until they do the the test with the, the Clockwork Orange images 
that he's actually two distinct separate entities. Yeah. You know? Another thing like, about that Clockwork Orange test, she says it's the same thing you get at the Starfleet whatever thing, but it was very personalized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was extremely well, specific to that situation. T- to be fair, Starfleet tests, as we saw with Wesley's test, is extremely personalized as well. Yeah. So okay, that is true. But she had the time to like engineer like a a, a no. She a, had the computer folder of photos. She said, "Computer, make a personalized psychological clockwork orange test for okay, data." Okay, we have established that the computers are gods, <laughs> so they can pretty much do anything you ask them. Yeah, yeah. They can yeah. speculate when you just tell them to. Yeah, yeah. All She's right, like, never computer, mind. I'm, I'm this world and that. Star Wars together. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Could God, we just got J.J. Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, Kirk Kirk is super, super angry and yelling all the time now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Damn just it. Kirk, Spock, too. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, yeah. Spock is also very angry and yelling all the time. Yeah. Bones is Remember very angry Spock and yelling. Remember when Spock yelled Khan? <laughs> <laughs> what a great moment. Uh, remember all of, <laughs> all of the interviews with J.J. Abrams leading up to that movie <laughs> saying this movie is not Wrath of Khan? <laughs> yeah. Don't be stupid. Benedict Cumberbund is not Khan. And then he has the moment where he says, my real name, zoom in, is Khan. <laughs> and the audience should honestly, like not the audience, but the the, the actors, the, the characters in that scene should be like, okay, your name's Khan. So? Like it means nothing to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> okay, your name, real name's Khan. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like it'd be like if I told you my real name is a Marvin. It's like it's Tim. It, it's Tim. Yeah. Okay. Tim Horton. <laughs> oh, yeah. fuck, you're okay. Tim. <laughs> You've been Tim all this time. <laughs> my oh, God, what? you lie to us. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, 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 uh, Jordy, Jordy and the captain have this conversation where he's like, Hey, he's your best friend, right? <laughs> he's like, sure. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, do you, do you, what do you think? What do you make of all this? And, and like, Jordy has an interesting thing, which is like, well, he does want to be human. So, like, he could be, it could be like a hard push to be more human, but like, it's just weird. And then Deanna Troy shows up and she's like, Yeah, turns out, like, yeah. the, it's like, nice the, try, Jordy. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, real story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is no. a bullshit. Yeah, I know you're his best friend and everything, but you yeah, don't get him at that, all. That was yeah. the funny part where <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jordy is like coming up with like a decent, plausible explanation. And Deanna walks in without knocking and says, Actually, <laughs> yeah. actually, you're wrong, dude. You're wrong. Sit down, Jordy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sit in the other seat, dude. Uh, and he's like, he's like, hey, uh, this guy has two personalities. He's a, he, the, the old, the crazy one's going to like eat out the little ones, uh, it's like the timid one, uh, if we don't do anything about it. And and they're like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, dude, some shit's going down, dude. And then uh, Data's talking to Karen, and he basically tells her like, hey, you idiot, didn't you know it was me? It's me, wink, wink, old McGregor syndrome guy. And mm-hmm. she's like, "Oh, Ira, Ira Glass." Yes. And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's me. I'm. I transferred my my soul into this body, just like that movie Fallen with Denzel Washington. <laughs> and <laughs> as soon as I find another robot, well, I'm gonna plug you into that robot. If you know what I mean." And she's like, "Yeah, but I no, I don't, I don't want that. Uh, uh, no." And it's funny because like at no point the doctor when you first met him, no, at no point the do- Ira Glass was was he like. Oh, I mean, he did say like he could put his consciousness in, into a computer, but at no point was he like, I want to live forever. That's my dream to live forever. Like that mm-hmm. was never his agenda. Yeah. Yeah. It so was just know. an idea he was yeah. working on. Yeah. Well, he um, said that he, he was like cheating death or, or he's something to that effect where it's like, I am like, my life is not ending here. Like he said it? that to data while right, he was in his right, office. Right. I, yeah. And it, 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 and then in, in that later scene, Picard kind of brings up a good point where Ira, where he says like, well, what would you have done if Data didn't show up? Because Data showing up was a pure coincidence. Like, were you just going to put yourself on like a computer disc? And yeah. like, that's it. Like, I'm, it's not, it's not clear. I it's think he would have been in that stationary computer in his office in perpetuity. <laughs> just stuck on that planet. But alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. So so Karen's like, I don't want that shit. It's fucking stupid, dude. It's a stupid idea. She starts crying and shit. Mm. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, I was I was way too old for you, but now in this body. 
You know what I mean? It's all, it's all, it's all there. It's First thing functional. functional. First yeah. thing I did was go to the bathroom, check out the old junk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> she basically says like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to do that. That's stupid. And then he, he, and like he, Karen's like, oh, Ira, you're hurting my hands. And he basically crushes her hand because he, yeah, he doesn't yeah. know how strong he is. And War comes over. He's like, dude, that man fucking hit you. I'll fucking beat the shit out of him. So those no, he fun. doesn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> he just <laughs> looks at her and it's like, uh, he left, he left 10 40. You want me to follow yeah. him or what do you want? And then he's like, are, are those your real fucking eyebrows? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and man, that, that'd be a good crossover. A Buffalo uh, Bill. This is a Star is Born. No, Star is Born. Oh, oh, oh God. I See, Buffalo you're doing it too now, Marvin. <laughs> yeah. Every time Ricardo <laughs> <laughs> first states anything, it's it's 50 oh, 50. Buffalo yeah. Bill. Yeah. It's Buffalo Bill, Al Pacino, or Bradley Cooper in Star is Born. Oh, you're- <laughs> I mean, they they had a bros. guitarist already show up in the season finale of the last yeah. season, so yeah. might as well. So, um, uh, they're like, "Hey, we gotta we gotta do something because if not, if we wait longer, he's gonna basically like the the Ira Glass is gonna take over. There will be none of data left. Here's our artificial ticking clock. Yeah. yeah. And so they they track data down. He's he's like in the engineering room, uh, very like serial killer ish. Right, yeah. In scene. Like it's it's shot really, really weirdly. Like he's hanging off kind of like this balcony thing, and he's like, yeah, yeah. he's like like a he's weird, broody, and unstable because yeah. he's just been essentially rejected. Yeah, yeah. He 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 feels like like he's doing like a like a Joker. Yeah, uh, almost. Uh, uh, yeah. Fun and, fact: uh, Brent Spiner went on to play the Joker in Young Justice, and he was a shitty ass Joker. Holy shit! Really? Well, also, to be fair, that was a shitty Joker. Yes. Like in that show. So, but like he did nothing to that vocal performance that was any good. Yeah. Well, it's fine. <laughs> and so he's like, he, you know, he basically starts bullshitting with the captain. And uh, the captain's like, well, I'm going to come up and talk to you. And he's like, you're not going to like what you see up here. And fucking Jordy's fucking, yeah, I thought he was dead, dude, when I first saw him. I, was like, I mean, it Whoa. looks like, it looks really bad. Yeah. yeah. Bodies all over the floor. And he's like, I'm not a violent man. And he's basically like, <laughs> there's three there's like two three bodies on the floor but he's not a violent man dude he's like, look <laughs> i carry this gun to protect myself but yeah i know i just shot the whole <laughs> like, fucking idiot dude <laughs> Don't, you're, you're stupid dude and he's like oh this wasn't my fault and uh basically like like he starts talking him down like he's trying to to communicate with data you know like hey mm-hmm. like, and 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 also re- reasoning with him like hey you look what you did and I don't know if this was planted either, but he gets he gets a call. He calls Sick Bay to find out how uh, Karen is, and she's like, "Oh yeah, she fra- her for her hands fractured in like two different places," mm-hmm. and like he he's really kind of torn apart now, like emotionally, he's compromised, just like Star Trek directed by J. Abrams, he's emotionally <laughs> compromised. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying J.J. Uh, Abrams is emotionally compromised? Yeah. When he made that movie. It was a plot point in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, this is the stupid re-explanation of the Kobayashi Maru test. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, he's basically like, he he really starts verbally attacking a Data, the captain does. And he's just fucking like talking down to him like, fuck, now you set him free, you piece of shit. And... <laughs> And Data like backhands the captain and he <laughs> falls really dramatically. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. they couldn't just do like a regular, like just fall. Like, it was really he was like, oh one. Lord. I think I, I think the vapors. he rolled across the wall. I think <laughs> part of it is because of the set they're on, they're kind of high. So he may have not wanted to fall in a way where he could like really get hurt. I like, guess so. So he wanted to really make sure he went towards the safe wall. Then kind of slid down versus like, oh, I'm going to kind of over overact my my hit and accidentally go towards the balcony or something because that could have been really bad. Yeah. yeah. So the doctor wakes up uh, the captain and uh, and he's like, oh, what the fuck? Where? Who am I? Where am I? And he lost his mind. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> he he uh, he basically gets up and he's like, oh, where the fuck? We don't have any time. Let's get to find data. And they find him, I guess, back in his quarters or I forget where it is. But they go in there and he's laying on the floor. And you're yeah. like, oh boy, another weird science thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he wakes up and again, he's he's back to sounding like Data. Very logical, very robotic. 
journey. And hello, friend. May I ask a question? And you're like, oh, he's back. This nerd's back, dude. <laughs> uh, and then, and then um, they realize that the, the old Ira Glass put himself in the computer. Um, but now I don't understand. Is he in the computer like, like in in that Han Solo movie where he like where that chick with that robot put herself into the computer? Is that no, what's in that movie? No, because they say they say that um, his his human personality is all gone. It's just the data. It's, it's knowledge, not it, consciousness. It, yeah, it's just the, it's just the knowledge. Oh, okay. So it's a it's an well, easy way for the, the writers to be like, and that's the end of that character until the computer yeah. starts whistling the <laughs> doom ba doom oh. ba doo doo doo. <laughs> that'd be that'd be like a good like uh like horror ending. Yeah, they, <laughs> bunch of whores yeah. running around. You know what? Uh, like this is just a quick little aside, but until today, <laughs> since I'd never seen The Wizard of Oz actually in my life before. I had yeah. always just assumed that if I only had a brain was the only song that had that tune in the song in the movie. Yeah, that's what and I so, thought too. And so when I heard that, like, if I only had a heart was also a song, I was like, wait, what the what? And I looked at, I was like, oh, they multiple characters sing this melody and have their own lyrics for it. How mm. about that? But it's the same melody for all of them. So he could have said it's. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know, it was about the heart of a human, though, and that's heart. supposed to be like the what Picard appeals to. It's like, hey, if you value humanity so much, yeah. then look at what you're doing to these poor people. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this ending. Yeah, um, no, it, it, no, it no, rings no. a little mm, bullshit. I call it bullshit. Yeah, I, it, it uh, feels like bullshit. Yeah, c- considering how like narcissistic Ira, Ira glasses, I can't yeah. imagine him giving up the body just because Picard got hurt. Yeah, <laughs> it's the only, especially Picard. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I could imagine is if if Karen went up to him and would try to convince him yeah. to leave. And yeah, like him, the first person he hurt was the one who it mattered most. Yeah, yeah. That, was, why was they it written saved that way? Karen for last, then it would have been more believable, right? Yeah, yep, 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 yeah. Yep. Why? I don't know why it wasn't written that way. That that that, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, there's not uh, enough time. Well, I mean, I mean, part of it also again. There's always time for one last kiss. <laughs> <laughs> this episode was also much like the last episode rewritten like quite a bit. And okay. that was primarily because it was actually originally two separate scripts and they kind of mixed them together. Huh? W- one was the original idea of Ira glass entering data's mind, but he really say his butt, <laughs> his butthole. <laughs> I mean, that, that could be where his port is. We don't look, like, he has a USB yeah. port is both. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> Uh, but but that's a, apparently was the original premise, except in that original premise, it was like a controlled thing. Like they agreed, they all agreed to do it because they didn't want to lose his brilliant mind. So Data was the oh, host. Oh, I see. And the other was that Data, remember how they said at the very beginning of the series, Data actually contains the personalities of all of the people in the colony where he lived? Oh, right. Uh-huh. So this was supposed to be an episode where they start emerging and he starts actually having multiple personalities. Oh shit! Really? Which would have been that interesting. Was be a plan? Oh, yeah, that I like was a that. that was a plan episode. That and that honestly sounds more interesting. Um, that could, could be interesting because because yeah. it's a very backstory ish type of story, and also Data could play more than or Brent Spiner could play more than one type of character. Mm-hmm. So it, right, it could, right. It could, that it could be really like interesting. an easy built in solution for you know that like issue yeah. of Brent Spiner being stuck as data. All yeah. The time. And all you need is probably maybe just one inciting incident. Maybe Ira still shows up and he goes, Oh, I'm checking something out in data. Psh, something goes wrong. Oh no. All the multiple personalities are coming out, blah, blah. Right? Yeah. Could be something yeah. like that. But for some reason they were told to combine those two scripts together. Dang. That's why he ended up with this, which huh. was, you know, Ira going in without permission. And now data has two personalities, but, you know, I mean, that that concept alone is interesting, but I just feel like the execution, it runs a little long, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, like the, all those scenes of Ira going in, obviously doing something creepy than leaving. Yeah. You know, like can, it happens a few too many times. Like this, this is a, a episode that almost needed a B plot to kind of like fill yeah, we out. Didn't, we didn't need two scenes with him and Karen at 10 forward. Yeah, we only needed the one. Really? Yeah. Because she should have recognized right away if she really was used to Ira's mannerisms and stuff like that. She should have like found, and I think that would have been more interesting if like Mm -hmm. she, she knew right away instead of kind of looking like ignorant, I guess. Yeah. Cause like as, as it is in the current episode, 
Karen comes off as kind of stupid. Yeah. yeah, she just kind of is there. Like a little too <laughs> clueless, which I don't like, especially considering that they later say, oh, she has an interest in science. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, it's weird. She's like almost childlike, despite the fact yeah, she's yeah, a grown yeah. woman. Like, it's, it sh- shouldn't she, I don't know, she's, it, she clearly wasn't well written as a character or fleshed out as a character, I should say. I will say that her uh, actor is pretty good at crying silently, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, I, and I feel like she probably would have had the chops to, you know, make the ending work. But I don't know the the, the uh, an ending work where she confronts she's the one to confront Ira, yeah. which thematic or character wise would have made more sense. But right anyway, anyway, that's that was the episode, I guess. Yeah, they they just shoved it in the computer, or Ira shoves himself in the computer, which is apparently totally fine. No, now he's the ghost in the machine. No one's yeah. no one's really bad about it. And then they uh, they leave. And they go, what did you think, Ricardo? What would you rate it? Um, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was. It was, it was um, not the best episode. There was some funny things. I liked Eric Glass. He was so cranky and st- stupid, um, and yeah. and wild and crazy. But I, there was so many plot holes in this, and I feel like this is not a strong episode for this for this season. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna go with like, look, I, it's just middle of the road, so I'm gonna go with five. Oh, okay. All right, right. Five starships. How about 10. you, Dan? Uh, I think uh, six point seven. <laughs> That's oh where God. I am. Because the last just, episode just, I had a seven point seven, <laughs> and I'm just knocking it down one whole point. Just, just, to, just to piss off Ricardo, keep it at the point sevens. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't know that was a thing that pissed him off. I didn't see. He didn't say anything last time. Oh, he actually did. Yeah. He very directly did. Oh shit! <laughs> I said, Dan, you rounded down to like a half number. <laughs> fine 6.57 yeah dude that's that's the that's the that's the cowboy way 6.57 bar uh, yeah I'll, I'll i'll give it like a seven it was fine i, I think the, i think the premise could have uh could have could have had another pass i i, I really don't like the ending i, I just don't yeah, believe the it ending all. is what kind of makes it like yeah, really, I, yeah i will say this episode is by far better than any of the shittiest episodes from the first season. Oh, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh, but, yeah, but oh, it's, yeah. Still, it's still a bad episode. Oh, and I'll well, I'll also give um some special props to uh, like Picard's performance in the final confrontation because like yeah, the things a, that he said yeah. are actually pretty cool. Yeah, I he's like doing him. a good job. Yeah, he's he's doing. And the this Picard. is also like the first. Well, some of the first bits, at least within this season, where we see Picard defending Data's personhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that 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 goes on to become a thing. So right, right. Yeah, this is the first time we sort of bring that up. Like, because Ira very directly says he's just a machine. Like, I don't need to respect his personhood. Yeah, you know? considering that, it's like, oh man, Pulaski could have factored in here. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things could have factored in. Yeah, that that could have had more characters giving opinions, etc. The fact that it started off with the medical log made you think like it might be an episode from the perspective Precisely, of Pulaski. Yeah, see? But yeah, yeah that, that, like never... that, that's kind of what I mean. It's like they they put Pulaski into the episode. She has a role, but then yeah. they don't like use her in the way that seems to make the, the, the whole most sense. Yeah, the whole script could have just used another pass, I think. Um, I, I feel sure. like they just did a single pass just to combine the scripts and they're like, that's good enough. Let's move on. And then. Just kind of how this show was written, you know. Oh, there's apparently one scene that was cut. I imagine it was cut because technically it's not easy to do or at, given the prosthetic technology at the time, probably mm-hmm. impossible to make it seem realistic. Mm-hmm. But apparently Data was supposed to respond to people not liking his beard by shaving all the hair off of his head oh. <laughs> so, that, so that he kind of oh. looks like Picard. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. I'd I'd laugh at that. That would have been great, but that's really difficult to do cuz yeah. that would have just been like a scene or like a, like a consistent thing through the episode. It would have I don't know. I guess it would have just been another scene where you're like, "Oh, the hair is all gone." And then I, I mean guess that, you know. I mean I, I guess that could be like a tag at the end of the episode. Yeah, wrap yeah. it all up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wrap up that episode be. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that was a schizoid, man. Uh, it was okay. Yeah. Not, not one of the stronger episodes of, of, uh. Could have been better. Yeah, it, it, it could have been better. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that, that, that was an episode of Newbie Star Trek. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you wanted hey. to listen to more stuff we do, like more episodes of Newbie Star Trek, in case you got here randomly somehow, or we also talk about 
random films and stuff like uh we you heard at the beginning of the episode which we often do now where we just talk about some random bullshit what do you mean now <laughs> uh, we the, always did that's that's true uh, uh we have a another podcast called the fugitive frames film podcast which is where we list films or we just discuss a specific type of film or topic um it's a pretty loose to- loose podcast yeah uh, I think we should we should really try to get on um, trying out that commentary thing and yeah, see, yeah. see how that works out. Um, um, new episode coming up in like a week or two is going to be uh, movies of 1982 mm. or three. I don't remember. One of those years. This is the one with uh, our friend Chuck. Yeah. 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 Because he, he the found founder that. of Chuck E. Cheese. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, wow. He yeah. wanted to make sure that there could always e. be a Cheese. place. <laughs> the original yeah, Charles E. Cheese. Charles E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to make sure there's always a place where a kid can be a kid. Yeah, so. Senor Queso. Because <laughs> he's down in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I I really hope you're not joking, but I think you're joking. Oh my God, that'd be so good if there Senor was Senor Queso would be so yeah, good. Yeah, in like a branch of, of Chuck E. Cheese in <laughs> Mexico. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is this? What is a Spanish version of Charles? Is there a Spanish version? Ver- Carlos. Carlos? Oh, Carlos y queso. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos e- yeah, Carlos y queso. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That would have been great. But yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, the, 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 the Future Frames Film Podcast. Also, <laughs> we have a, a random, uh, we have a YouTube channel, uh, The Fugitive Games, where we do Let's Plays. Right now, we're going through, uh, still going through Phoenix Wright Justice for All, which is good. But we're also just started Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Uh, which is not just a fun game, but there's a lot of weird, not weird. I have a lot of history with that game. Yeah, Marvin so, in particular has <laughs> quite the history with this game. Uh, Unique so, to yeah. Marvin. <laughs> and I also, guarantee that <laughs> literally no one else has this history with that game. I defy uh, you to come up with anybody <laughs> who shares this history with, or shares Marvin's history with this game. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, and, and also, um, because we had to get around all the copyright stuff because for the radio stations, we actually replaced all the radio stations with our own, not our, our own music, but music that is LP friendly, should we yeah. say. So that's, that's fun. It's a, a special version of Vice City that we've And in particular, the, the, the talk radio, uh, <laughs> that's can true. sometimes, um, be, oh, uh, Ricardo, strangely yeah. familiar. Yeah, Ricardo. So the talk but, radio, there's two talk radio stations in Vice City. Um, one of them is an episode of Newbie Star Trek, the one where Denise Crosby dies, just to spite you. And then the other <laughs> oh. is is the We've uh, already heard you <laughs> lamenting her death while playing Vice City. <laughs> and the other is um a film podcast with um when you did the the Hallmark Christmas episodes of Drew Shit Savannah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, so th- that's in the game as the talk Oof. radio stations. Uh but but yeah, um all of those things you can find at fugitiveframes.com. So it's easier to find. Just go to fugitiveframes.com and you can see a full range of stuff. Just that go made. to that URL and click yeah. on everything. Just click, click, go click. To, go to go to uh, dot gov dot edu. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. No, next week we're going to look at Unnatural Selection, which is a Pulaski centered episode, which will be again. Uh, yeah. Roman yeah. Polanski again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> It's been a while since we made that joke. <laughs> oh no. Got but her. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're going to we're going to we're going to see her go through some shit, some traumatizing shit. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, I have been Marvin here with Dan and Ricardo and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Stay safe. See you around. See you guys. Bye. Take Be care, well. y'all. Me Polanski with you.